Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. I have a real short topic to start with, which is some more bad news for supplements. The SELECT trial involved giving 35,000 men over the age of 50 selenium plus placebo, vitamin E plus placebo, either selenium and vitamin E together or just placebo. And the study showed that taking the supplements didn't reduce the risk of developing prostate cancer. But there's a new development. A new analysis of these data shows that taking the supplements can increase the risk of prostate cancer. So in the original study, the researchers measured the amount of selenium in the toenails of the subjects. And the updated analysis showed that men who took the placebo did not have any increase in their risk of prostate cancer, but the men who had higher levels of selenium at the beginning of the study and took selenium pills had two times greater risk of developing high-risk prostate cancer. Men taking vitamin E, including those who had even low levels of vitamin E at the beginning, had both increased risk for prostate cancer and higher Gleason scores at the time of diagnosis. So not only was there no benefit, but there was considerable risk from taking the supplements. There are so many misconceptions about supplements. You know, first, that they're natural. Well, there's nothing natural about vitamins in a pill. The second thing is that they're effective, and they can be in the same way that drugs are. I mean, if you take drugs, you manipulate a biomarker. Sometimes supplements will do that too, but that doesn't necessarily mean that long-term outcomes change. And the third is that they're safe, third misconception. The fact is that most aren't. Like drugs, isolated nutrients are not inert substances, and anything that affects one aspect of human health will affect others, and hence the problem with taking these supplements. Um, they might be helping in some respects, but if they increase your risk of prostate cancer, not so good. So hopefully this type of stuff, and I'll keep putting it out there, is gonna make everybody more and more cautious about taking supplements. Now, I have a longer thing to cover, which is the use of antibiotics on, uh, in factory farming. And I've talked about this before, but there's some new information I think is really worth sharing with you. And I'll just start by saying that I don't think anybody defends this practice anymore. I mean, government agencies, health organizations, everybody agrees the overuse of antibiotics is a problem, uh, particularly on factory farms. And the only advocates for the practice are the farmers who benefit from using, or maybe the better term is abusing, antibiotics in farming. Now, they're not only used as a prophylactic to prevent a disease in these um, factories in which animals are packed in in almost unthinkable conditions, but they're also used to promote rapid growth. So I think most people know that antibiotics can kill bacteria. I don't think a lot of people know that antibiotics can actually be used to promote faster growth. And research is starting to show that this might actually be impacting obesity rates in humans as well. And I'll explain how that all works in a second here. Now, one thing I still find shocking is that a farmer can walk into a farm supply store and purchase bags of antibiotic powder without any type of prescription. And the label clearly states that the drugs will increase the growth rate of the animals, which reduces the amount of time it takes to get animals from birth to the slaughterhouse. So it's a great way to save money if you're a farmer. The use of antibiotics to fatten up animals dates back to 1948 when a biochemist by the name of Thomas Jukes was looking for additional uses for antibiotics. And he discovered that chicks fed antibiotic laced food grew to as much as two times the size as chicks not given those drugs. Now he wanted to do more research, but at the time there was just a tiny bit more ethics in the drug business and antibiotics were reserved for saving the lives of people who have bacterial infections, which is as it should be. So instead he used leftovers or slurry from the manufacturing of the drugs and in his experiments he showed that not only chicks but pigs, sheep, and cows actually also had faster growth if given antibiotics. Now it's almost unconscionable to think this but experiments were also conducted on the use of antibiotics to grow children faster. You actually heard that right. Scientists gave antibiotics to mentally impaired school children in Guatemala and noted that they gained three times more weight than the controls. They also tried this with adult Navy recruits who were given antibiotics and showed that they put on weight as well. The main market, thankfully, for antibiotics remained agriculture, and companies like Hormel began separating baby pigs from their mothers and feeding them antibiotic-laced foods in order to fatten them up quickly. Drug companies started selling what's called antibiotic slurry, the leftover byproduct of making the drugs, directly to farmers, and Eli Lilly created an antibiotic feed additive. 
In addition to rapid growth, farmers could keep the animals indoors in filthy conditions since they didn't get sick anymore. This is the beginning of factory farms, and it's now a standard practice for these farms to give antibiotics, steroids, and hormones to animals. And the result of this terrible practice, well, there's several terrible ones, but one of them is an increased incidence of antibiotic-resistant bacterial infections. Now, we're no longer feeding antibiotics to disabled children or promoting them for growing humans, but there is some concern that the use of antibiotics, both in the foods that we eat and the over-prescribing that happens in many doctor's offices, may be contributing to our obesity crisis. Dr. Martin Blazer at New York University is conducting research to determine if this is the case. Blazer fed mice a high-calorie diet and antibiotics, uh, laced with antibiotics, and they gained twice as much body fat as mice that ate the same foods without the antibiotics. The results were even more pronounced in female mice. He hypothesizes that high calorie diets and antibiotics for kids might be contributing to increased obesity. Think about it. These kids are eating animals, animal foods, uh, very high calorie animal foods. They are becoming obese and they're also being prescribed a lot of antibiotics for ear infections and all kinds of things that are brought on from eating other types of animal foods like dairy products. Blazer is also researching how antibiotics change the bacteria that live in the guts of both mice and humans. Research has shown that antibiotics can kill off entire populations of beneficial bacteria within a matter of days. Technology now allows, us, allows researchers to analyze bacterial populations in humans and how those bacteria are impacting our health. For example, babies born via C-section don't obtain beneficial bacteria by being born vaginally, the normal way that babies acquire bacteria. So they acquire bacteria from the hospital environment. And children born via C-section are much more likely to be obese later in life. Formula feeding instead of breastfeeding impacts the development of beneficial bacterial colonies even more. These bacteria impact metabolism, immune function, nutrient absorption, and many other factors. So fortunately, this new awareness and a lot of the research that's being done is um, developing more interest in the use of probiotics to restore bacterial colonies, and I think that's a good thing. Now, some of the things that people come up with just drive me crazy. Some researchers are interested in developing drugs that can protect humans against the destruction caused by antibiotics. There's a drug to remedy the side effects of any drug, I guess. But the better option would be to stop eating a high calorie diet, to eliminate the use of antibiotics in factory farm animals, except for treatment purposes, and to use antibiotics much more sparingly in medical practice. And we'd solve a whole bunch of problems if we did this. The elimination of these factory farms, which would happen if you can't keep these animals in close confinement unless you give them antibiotics and drugs to protect them against disease. So if we got rid of them, we'd protect the environment, we'd end a lot of cruelty to animals, the incidence of antibiotic resistant infections would be reduced, and invariably the obesity rate would go down. So it looks like we're fattening up the humans while we're fattening up the animals, and that's just unacceptable because um, it ruins people's quality of life and it puts an incredible financial burden on the taxpayers. So that's all for now. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I will be back to you again next Tuesday.